cranking compression is your gauge your gauge is lying to you I bring this up is because this is the main reason why I started using transducers is I would get cars that would come in and they'd have a misfire to idle I'd rev them up to about 12 1300 rpms and the the um, the misfire would kind of clear up and I'll check compression on them and uh, the compression was always good and then I'd spend a bunch of time on it and just to find out that I had a burnt valve or a compression problem anyway so after getting burned by that enough times I found out the problem was my compression gauge was lying to me um, so then I went to transducers and what's nice about the snap-on transducers is if you've already got our compression gauges or any of our gauges you can just unscrew the gauge the transducer will screw right into its place and then you've got a, a lead that goes to your Zeus or Varus or whatever tool you're using but <clears throat> uh, with the transducer you get to see every time that piston goes up and down and here's an example of a cranking compression test where you can see every time that piston goes up and down I get a, a, a picture of what each uh, stroke looks like. Now if I use my traditional gauge on this example it's going to read fine, it's going to read good and so with the transducer they both read good, no, no harm no foul. But the problem is is when you get in scenarios like I was talking about where you have this type of scenario. So now I've got bad compression, good compression, bad compression, good compression. So the problem with the traditional gauge set is you have a Schrader valve in the bottom of the hose. You don't use a Schrader valve when you're using uh, transducers. So with a gauge with a Schrader valve, you're trapping these high pressures in your gauge and you're totally missing these low events. And that can lead to a misdiagnosis, which happened to me uh, quite a few times. And so that's why I... I first made my change over to transducers was for cranking compression because I was getting burned by my gauge line to me and I was missing all this you know just you can kind of picture the valves rotating in the head while you where the engines rotating where they can seal and not seal seal and not seal and here's a good example of that happening and you're just going to miss that with a traditional gauge where a transducer you know makes it points it out real real vividly here so if you haven't tried the transducers yet this is a great place to start um, do your cranking compression tests um, you know the running compression test with the with the waveform viewer overlays is a whole nother level of cool and and once you have the transducers that could be your next step and using it as a running compression test as well um, so uh, the transducers that Snap-on has, we've got a, um, what did we get? We've got a 0 to 100, we've got a 0 to 500, and Snap-on also makes a 0 to 5,000, which, which we don't have. But um, the, the 0 to 100, I, I put that on my um, fuel pressure gauge, um, and then I've... Uh, put the 0 to 500 on my cranking compression gauge and I never looked back it was the best thing I ever did um, if I go through uh, some of these uh, other slides I've got here um, where'd I put it Might be able to do something different. Oh, there it is. Here's uh, here's me using um, my fuel pressure transducer. So I'm using two channels here. I've got a fuel injector in green, and then I've got my fuel pressure um, in yellow. And what I've done is that that fuel pressure, you know, it's not a straight line if you zoom in far enough. And so what I've done is you can see, you know, anything from 94 or newer is pretty much sequential injection. 
So I've got my fuel pressure line here and I've zoomed into it. And you can see when this injector fires here, you can see how much fuel it used when that injector fired. And then the next cylinder, and this was a six cylinder engine. And so you could actually put your firing order in here since it's sequential and you'd know what each cylinder. So here's just another cool thing you can do other than just check your fuel pressure and is is actually zoom in and see if each injector is flowing correctly. Now if you don't have a you know a good way I, I've, I like to use a gas analyzer and pull spark to, to see how well my injectors are flowing. Uh, some some tools some uh, cars have scanner software that, which allows you to do this test as well but even in the early days we used to use the gas analyzer and we'd pull spark from a cylinder and we'd watch our gas readings to see if all the injectors were flowing correctly. But here's the poor man's way of doing it. You've got the transducers anyway and the transducers just give you a lot more um, give you a lot more information than what a gauge can and these are just a few examples. So if you're not using transducers yet, I, I highly recommend doing it. It's made a world of difference over the years for me. And um, so, got any questions on any of this stuff? We can we can dive in a little deeper um, on some of the transducer stuff. Anyway, thanks.